Hello and welcome to the latest diary entry. That road trip to France and driving the D996 really was a celestial moment because it was the first time I truly connected with this car. And if I'm totally honest with you, it's the first time I thought about keeping this car <laughs> beyond the end of the year. Coming back from France, I thought, do you know what? This is a cracking 911, excellent value for money and probably worth investing in. Not in terms of, oh, this is going to make me a truckload of money. That's A, it won't, and B, that's not why I bought this car. I want a 911 that I can have fun in and enjoy driving for a fair amount of time. As we know, there are a few stumbling blocks with this car, one of which was the wrap. The wrap's been on for four years now. It's hanging, if we're honest. You can see around the wing mirrors, they were never done particularly well anyway, but they're peeling off. I've decided to, as I said, invest in it. And what that basically means is, the wrap's coming off now, today in fact, and that's why I'm driving to Paul Accident Repair, who are one of only 12 Porsche approved body shops in the UK. I've used them before for previous restoration stuff on my first 911 actually. So we'll take the wrap off and see what we've got underneath. Might need a polish up, might need a full paint, who knows? We'll find out. Leon, how you doing? Very well, Lee. So the wrap is coming off this car today. It is. What are we reasonably expecting to find underneath that? We don't really know. The age of the vehicle would normally state that it's had some form of paintwork. There's more than likely that's where our issues will arise with the wrapping that's put on here. This is the Christmas present that you don't know what's in it, <laughs> you haven't asked for, yeah. and it's a surprise from Santa. Yeah. Now it can either be a great present, which is what you're really looking for, <laughs> yeah. or it can be the bad present. Purchasing a vehicle with a wrap on, you should really prepare for the worst and hope for the best. Door mirrors, that's quite standard where they peel off. And that really states whether or not it was a high quality wrap or whether it was a cost effective wrap. Um, I think we can safely say it was a cost effective wrap. What we've got to hope for is that it wasn't cost effectively wrapped because it was hiding a multitude of sins. It won't cover everything, but it will cover up your, your average scratches, poor paintwork, different colours, yeah. um, so I, I don't think we will, but a scenario could be that we peel the wrap off your wing yeah. and it's actually a silver wing yeah. rather than a blue one. Uh, in simple terms, you can't just take the wrap off, it's got to be heated first. Yeah, we will have to heat the wrap up. It's been on there a long time. Most of the time, the, the wraps can go quite brittle. So um, from our point of view today, what we're hoping for is that we can keep some heat in it. We're going to be using hot air guns and we're going to be using some lamp systems that we've got, which are basically just large infrared lamps. Okay. That will just warm a big area because the ideal scenario is that we, we lift the edges of the bonnet and we peel off in one piece. All right, sound. Well, I'll let you and your team make a start then and we'll, we'll see what's underneath the wrap. Okay, okay, let's go for it. So we're just going to warm up this edge here and just start. start to release the wrap and sadly straight away we found that the wrap is actually pulling the paint off stone chips they've been covered up with the wrap it causes a weakness and it's the weakness that the wrap will adhere to give it a pull and then this will give us an idea of what's going on Is not what we wanted to see. No. Uh, basically what we have here is attached to the vinyl. The reason why it's matte is because this is actual base coat. So the base coats on the vehicles are, are this finish. So this is quite unique. This is the finish of all modern day vehicles. They are matte. It's actually the lacquer that gives them the gloss. We've basically got some form of poor adhesion between the base coats. What we can say is, looking at areas here, it's not original paintwork. It was looking like bad news for the 996 then. It doesn't look like the car has ever been crashed, but it certainly had paint over the years. There was something weirdly satisfying about peeling the wrap off the car, even though every time we did, we were permanently braced for what we might find beneath. 
The further we pressed on, the more I realised I'd be digging quite substantially into my wallet on this one. However though, it was supremely satisfying to get rid of that absolutely gopping white wrap to reveal that beautiful zenith blue colour underneath. It looked lovely. Cool, so we are around about halfway. I think we've now seen exactly what we can expect on the rest of the vehicle. I think what we can say here that it's had a, a pretty box standard front end repaint. Um, with what we're going to look at in a second, we can also say this is probably a cost effective repaint. Now what we do know is that it's an original bonnet. So we still do have the original chassis sticker. What we can also see is that it's had some hammer work here. So it would basically say that it's had a dent, it's possibly had stone chips, as that the, these uh, very prone to stone chip from front end. The actual exterior itself is quite flat, so we're not expecting anything untoward when we come around to this. Cool. What we have seen is a few examples of what we call micro blistering on the top here so we've got variants in colors there's another one there it's more than likely this is actually somebody has filled the stone chips so rather than removing the stone chips they have filled the stone chips and then painted over it and that would probably give us a, a pretty good reason of why they've got what they call delamination which is basically paint flake um, and the reason why we, we can sort of safely say that this was a cost-effective paint repair of, of the front end, we've also got evidence of paintwork on the door, which has got higher gloss levels. So we can say that you can have your vehicle repaired and have it wrapped and leave it on for the five years that this has been on here, because that door and the quarter panel are an example, looking at the quality of, the, of that paint finish to the quality of this paint finish, I would say that was done in a, in a, I say more respectable body shop that understood what materials they had to use. I'm sure this was fine and I'm sure it looked great until someone put essentially sellotape all over it. There was a point that you made um, off camera. When the car comes uh, to you guys, obviously there are certain standards that you have to uphold. What we will do, which is probably far more important when it comes to any vehicle, is we will only use the genuine repair methods to repair the vehicle. So at no point have Porsche ever produced a method that said, please don't remove stone chips, fill them with filler. And there's a good reason for that. And here is it. Because <laughs> if you repaint over it again, you just put bigger paint film, paint depth on there, which is essentially what we've got here. So I, of course I'm gonna say, always use a Porsche recommended repairer. What you must do is make sure we're using the genuine repair methods and the genuine painting materials that is required. One thing I will say is maybe this has been a little bit unlucky. The wrap itself, as we've seen along the way, was perhaps a little bit worse than cost effective. So although they've taken time to glue the badges back on, they never actually took time to remove the rear mud flaps and they've just cut around the windows. But so far, I'm not saying it's the best Christmas present you were expecting, yeah. but it's far from the worst. Okay, all right, well that's fair enough. We'll, we'll let uh, you and your team uh, continue with the rest of the, the unwrap. To be continued. Yeah, to be continued. Coming up in part two, we decide whether or not to paint the car, which, spoiler alert, might lead to a colour change.